So a couple of things on the lab from yesterday. Let's talk about the two that typically get screwed up. And that's five and six on that last page. And this, so there's like three labs in a row that deal with this concept of net force. This, the LEM lab was the first one. And then we've got this one on vertical acceleration. We have another one tomorrow on horizontal acceleration. And all three of them boil down to this, that force applied plus force opposing and force net. Okay? Every problem that you're going to deal with, start with this idea. Okay? Start with this idea. So, and remember, it's only that net force that equals mass times acceleration. So if you look on question number five, okay? Here's the limb. You want a vertical acceleration of negative 1.10. Okay, that's your acceleration. That's not your velocity. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're going down. All that means is on a velocity time graph, no matter where you are, we're saying that that slope has a value of negative 1.1. It might be positive velocity and you're slowing down. It might be negative velocity and you're speeding up. So when you see negative acceleration, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're Go, that you're going down, okay? It just means that you have a negative acceleration. Now, here's the big idea. When you take that mass, which you're going to, that 5,000 kilograms, and multiply that by the negative 1.1 meters per second squared, that's going to get you a negative net force, okay? That's your net force. That isn't your applied force. That isn't your opposing force. That's your net force, okay? So start with this idea. Now, your opposing force is negative 8,350 newtons because that's the gravitational pull between the limb and the moon, okay? So that's negative 8,350. Boom, there you go. Now think this through. Your applied force, is that going to be, is your applied force going to be bigger or smaller than negative 8,350? Derek, is my applied force going to be bigger or smaller than negative 8350? Smaller. Smaller. So there's two things I know about that applied force. Number one, it has to be a positive number. Okay? So I've got a negative 8350 coming down here. That's what I have to pay to the gravity mafia. So no, I know my force applied is going to be less than that, pointing up, so that that way I end up with a negative net force. So your, your answer to number five has to, be a, has to be a positive number, but less than 8350. Now, when you get to number six, okay? Six, here's the difference. Now I want a positive acceleration. So the only thing that's gonna happen and change on number six is that now I'm gonna have a positive net force, okay? Here you go. I still have the same opposing force of negative 8350, so, Derek, so now, if I want a positive net force, does my applied force have to be bigger or smaller than 8350? Bigger. Bigger, okay? Because now, I'm going to have a gravitational force acting down, an applied force acting up that's bigger, so that I end up with a positive net force, okay? On your graph... Make sure that I can see two distinct things. When it's speeding up, when it's slowing down, when you have a positive net force, when you have a negative net force, okay? So those are the four things. You can color code them, you can use positive, negative, you can use arrows going speeding up, slowing down, I don't care. Just make sure that I see what those are. All right, any questions on the LEM lab? So once, it's going to try, so, okay. Give those hands a bit.
Phoenix, all once once we start the lab, I'll deal with that and mark that down. Okay. So today is the second day of lab, then we got another lab tomorrow. And so vertical acceleration problems are typically what I call elevator problems. So it's usually involving helicopters or elevators. So that's why I call them elevator problems. So what you're going to do in the lab, there's going to be two parts to it. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a 500 gram mass, such as this. You can use a string if you want to, or you can just hook this thing directly up to it. But you're going to take the handy dandy Newton scale, which, all, which you all have used before. Okay, Turn that on. You're going to be lifting it vertically. So hold it up, re-zero that scale, okay, like this. And then the first thing that you're going to do is that you're just going to hold it up like this, and you're going to move it up, and listen to me very carefully, I have two important words. You're going to move it up at a constant velocity, okay? So if I move this up at a constant velocity, I'm at about 4.89 newtons, okay? So listen to me very carefully. I'm moving this up at a constant velocity. The reading on the scale is 4.89 newtons. I'm lifting a 500 gram mass. So here's the million dollar question. Is this scale reading my applied force, my opposing force, or my net force? So what does this scale give me? It's giving me one of those three. It's either my applied force, my opposing force, or my net force. Jack. We're doing that. Okay, stop the bus. Stop the bus. Stop the bus. I was moving it at a constant velocity. So Tyler, if I'm moving at a constant velocity, what's my acceleration? Zero. Zero. I have no acceleration. So Tyler, if I have no acceleration, what's the value of my net force? Zero. Zero. I have no net force, okay? I'm not saying there aren't forces acting on it. I just don't have a net force. So, Jack, if you were right, I would be accelerating. So, I, this can't be my net force because if it was my net force and I was moving it at a constant velocity, the, the reading on the scale would be a zero, okay? Be zero. So, it can't be my net force. Hey, now you got a 50-50 shot. It's either my applied force or my opposing force. Yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay, so the scale, what you're going to read on the scale is your applied force. Because what's pulling down as I try and lift this? Gravity. The gravity mafia is going to Tony, huh? No, I'm going to hold you down, right? So your opposing force is gravity pulling this down. Now, if you think about it, you have a 500 gram mass. If I take 0.5 kilograms times G, oddly enough, I get 4.9 newtons. okay? So what's happening is that I have a negative force of negative 4.9 newtons. I have an upward force of 4.9 newtons, and those two values add up to equal zero. Therefore, I have an acceleration of Zero, and I'm moving at a constant velocity. So when I move this up at a constant velocity, that scale is reading about 4.9. So that's the first thing that you're going to do. You're going to take a scale, hook it up, boom, there you go. Now, then you're going to accelerate it upward. Okay, so listen to me very carefully. You're going to make this thing accelerate upward. So when I accelerate this upward, and this is sometimes tough to read, so if you all want to get fancy, and take your phones and uh, re record a video of this as it's being lifted okay. so you can kind of see what the reading are. You don't have to go through that extreme. That's really if you want to get fancy. It's like, ooh, we have technology. Or you can just get the reading on the scale. So think this through. Connor, I want this thing to accelerate upward. So this is measuring my applied force. I want this thing to accelerate upward. So is my applied force going to be bigger or smaller than 4.9 newtons? Bigger. Bigger. Okay. So if I have an applied force that's bigger, okay, because I'm not going to change the weight. 
The Gravity Mafia, remember, charges $9.80 per kilogram. This is a half a kilogram. The Gravity Mafia is going to charge $4.90. And you're not going to change the money that goes to the Gravity Mafia. So no matter what, I am not going to change how much money I have to pay to the Gravity Mafia. Okay? Not going to change. It's a fixed value. So, but if I make that applied force bigger, it's just like what happened yesterday with the limb. Oh, I have a positive applied force that's bigger than my opposing force. I end up with a positive net force. I get a positive acceleration. So, you're going to do four different things. You're going to hook this up. You're going to move up at a constant velocity, get the reading on the scale. You're going to move down at a constant velocity, get the reading on the scale. You're going to make it accelerate upward, get the reading on the scale, bless you. And then you're going to make it accelerate downward and get the reading on the scale. Now, so when you do that, keep in mind that what this scale is reading is your applied force, okay? Opposing force is a fixed value. You're not going to change that number. Now, here's the other way that you can, how this plays out with an elevator. This sounds weird, but it's science, so it's okay. So imagine that you walk into an elevator and you're wearing a trench coat, which right away sounds a little bit weird, but it's science. And you have a bathroom scale, okay? You have a bathroom scale hidden in the trench coat. You scurry through the lobby trying not to look guilty of anything. And you get in the elevator and you put the bathroom scale on the bottom of the elevator and you stand on it. Nothing's moving. You're standing there. Okay? And you're standing here like this, and you look down and you're re and it's reading 150 pounds. Okay, whatever that is. You look down, boom, it's 150 pounds. Got it. Boom. Door shuts, you're alone in the elevator, thank God. Now you push the up button. Okay? Push the up button. You're you begin to accelerate upward. Okay, what's going to happen to the reading on that scale? Is it going to stay at 150? Keep in mind you're accelerating the upward. You're at rest. Boom, you begin to move up. Is that reading on the scale going to stay at 150? Is it going to become greater than 150 or less than 150? Make the mark. Bigger, smaller, less than 150. <laughs> Bailey, you're in the elevator. Your body has mass, right? Mm -hmm. It's made up of stuff. True? Mm -hmm. According to Newton's first law of motion, what does your body want to do? Move or stay at rest? Stay at rest. Your body wants to stay at rest. Until what? Beautiful. Spot on, right? So you're standing here. Your body has mass. It wants to remain at rest, right? You begin to accelerate upward. Now, it, when you begin to accelerate upward, is that going to change the gravitational pull that's acting on you? Mm -hmm. That's going to stay the same, right? Okay? Your body wants to remain at rest. Boom! Get an upward acceleration. So you, the scale not only has to keep gravity from pulling you down, it also has to make you accelerate upward. So let's ask you this again. You're reading 150 pounds when you're just standing up. You begin to accelerate upward. What's going to happen to the reading on the scale? It's going to go up. It might go up like 160, 170, something like that. So if you've ever been in an elevator, when it begins to accelerate upward, you can almost feel it in your stomach. It's like, whoo, you kind of feel this heavy feeling because your body has mass. Your body wants to remain at rest. And it's going to do that until an outside force acts upon it. Now, in contrast to this, you're up there on the 10th floor, and you begin, and you push the down button. The elevator begins to accelerate downward. Mr. Fisher, you begin to accelerate downward. What's going to happen to the reading on that scale? Bigger or smaller, equal to 150. It's going, it's going to get smaller. Yeah, because you need to accelerate downward. So when you begin to accelerate downward, oh, right. I'm going to feel, I'm, you can almost feel it fall out from underneath you. So you're not going to feel as heavy because of the fact that that's going to be accelerating downward. 
it's still there. Okay, you still need this because you don't. What you don't want, you do not. You do not. You do not want to be in an elevator and look down at that bathroom scale and then it's reading zero. Because at that point, you are in free fall, the cable has snapped and bad things are going to happen. Okay? So the last thing you want to do is see that thing reading zero. Okay? Now, so that those are the two relatively easy ones. But here's the other thing I want you to think through. Your elevator, if you look at it in a velocity time graph, Let's say you're on the first floor, and your velocity time graph actually looks something like this, okay? So your velocity time graph, you start at rest, and it, and it speeds up until the elevator reaches its constant speed. Then the elevator maintains a constant velocity. That's when your forces are going to balance out. Well, you obviously need to stop at some point, okay? So you need to stop when you get to the 10th floor, so your velocity time graph is going to look like this. So you have positive acceleration. That's when you begin to accelerate upward. You have a positive net force. Your applied force is bigger than your opposing force, right? So here you're cruising at a constant velocity. The forces are balanced out. You're moving. Everything balances out. Then you begin to slow down, okay? Now you need negative acceleration. So as you begin to slow down, your upward force needs to be, needs to be less than your opposing force so that you can begin to slow down. So here, you're going to have negative acceleration. And the only way you can have negative acceleration is if the applied force going up is less than the opposing force going down. Now, you feel almost like you're floating, kind of gets a feeling, right? Because your body is moving. It wants to keep moving at a constant velocity. But what's happening is that because of the fact that you have mass, because you have inertia, and Bailey so eloquently stated Newton's first law of motion, objects in motion remain in motion until an outside force acts upon them. So your body wants to keep moving at 10 meters per second, whatever that elevator is moving at. But the elevator begins to slow down. You want to keep moving at 10 meters per second, and that's why you almost feel like your stomach kind of goes up a little bit, because your stomach has mass, and it wants to keep moving at a constant velocity. Okay, there's that. Now, the next part is going to be what we call an Atwood machine. An Atwood's machine. So you've actually dealt with an Atwood's machine every time you've used the state. So, hold on. In the lens, I'm going to do your job and spin this around. Okay. All right. So, here's what we've got. So I've got a 500 gram mass on this side, and I've got the stapler on this side, right? Now, when I let go of it, does it begin to accelerate? So what does that mean? In what is your net force not equal? Zero. My net force is not equal to zero. Now, I want to play out two, two scenarios. Scenario number one, I have a 500 gram mass, okay, which this is, weighs 4.9 newtons, okay? If I just cut the string, okay, boom, I take a pivot of scissors, I cut the string. No upward force from the string. I cut the string, cut it. If I cut the string, Connor, what's the net force acting on a 500 gram mass if I just cut the string? Uh, Fantastic. I have a downward because a force of negative 4.9 newtons. Because if you look at force applied plus force opposing equals force net. If I cut that string, there is no applied force. The only force acting on it is the gravity mafia. And I guarantee you, if you take that negative 4.9 newtons, which Connor so eloquently stated is negative 4.9 newtons, I divide that by the mass of 0.5 kilograms. I'm going to get an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Because that's the only force acting on a 500 gram mass. It's this Jedi Stofawa thing. Stop the force and watch. If I stop applying that upward force from that string, and I watch what happens, oh, I get an acceleration of negative 4.9 newtons. Okay? So here's the story. So gravity is pulling down at negative 4.9 newtons. 
I cut the string, I'm going to get an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, when I let go of this, Carson, is my acceleration bigger or smaller than 9.8 meters per second squared when the stapler is attached? When I let go of it, is my acceleration bigger or smaller than if I just drop it? Smaller. Smaller. So what that tells me is this. That tells me that there is an upward force acting that's opposing the gravity mafia. Okay? Now, think this through. Adana, which one has more mass and weighs more? The 500 grams or the stapler? I don't know. Well, look, which direction does it fall? Oh, the mass. Yeah, the 500 gram mass weighs more because that's the one that pulls it, right? So this is kind of like, anybody got like a younger sibling? Mm -hmm. Let's go with your... You, Jake, you have, a, you have a little brother or little sister? Brother. Little brother. Okay. So imagine Jaden's going out on a date. Okay? All right? You ready? And you're excited. It's like, oh, going out on a date. And you're ready to walk out the door. And mom says, you got to take it on your little brother. So the brother at this point is a drag, right? It's opposing you. It's pulling you back. You can't accelerate as quickly because you have to drag along little brother. Okay? So that's basically what's happening here. So here's Jake going out on the date. She's excited, ready to go. Boom. <laughs> Click, right, right. But she's got to drag along her little brother. So she can't accelerate as quickly. Now, mom says, oh, I was just kidding. You don't have to drag along your little brother. That would be like me cutting the string. Boom. Jane's going to accelerate a lot faster. So when you, this is like your little brother that you have to drag along with you. Okay? So, I'm going to go like this, and oddly enough, this is going to work out the same idea, force applied plus force opposing equals force net. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the bigger force the applied force, okay? So we would make this like 4.9 newtons. So the downward force, the bigger one that falls, is going to be the applied force, okay? This is going to be your little brother that Jaden has to drag along with it. This is going to be the weight of the opposing force. So if this is 4.9, this, this might be like 4.6 newtons. So imagine this. I have a 4.9 newton force going down. I have a 4.6 newton force acting in the opposite direction. If this is 4.9 and this is 4.6, what's my net force? Point, uh, point 0.3. 0.3. So I have a net force of 0.3, right? So your net force is going to be the difference between the weight of the big one and the weight of the smaller one. Now, what we're ultimately after is the acceleration. So I've got a net force of 0.3 newtons. Now, here's the question. To get the acceleration, I need, I need to divide by mass. So here's the question. Do I divide by the 500 grams? Do, do I divide by the mass of the stapler? Or do I divide by the combined mass of both? Is it? So, my last step, I need to find the acceleration. Mm -hmm. Do I divide by the mass of Jaden, the mass of her little brother, or the combined mass since they're both going out on the date? Fantastic. You always, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You always divide by the combined mass of the system. Because everything has mass, right? Everything wants to remain at rest. When I let go of this, this mass doesn't want to move. The stapler doesn't want to move. So they both have inertia. They both have resistance to the change. So that 0.3 Newton force is acting on both masses. This one doesn't want to move, but we're going to make it accelerate downward. This one doesn't move, but we're going to make it accelerate upward. So it's like, it's like you're taking a 0.3 Newton force and you're making it act on both masses at the same time. So listen to me, no matter what the system is, you, there's no exceptions to this rule, none, zero zip. You always divide by the combined mass of the system, okay? All right, so, let me swing this around.
Okay. So here's the second part of the lab. You're going to take a ring stand like this, and you're going to take a uh, single shiv pulley, and you can put a string over it like such. Okay. You need to tie a couple of loops on the end. If you don't know how to tie loops, let me know. Basically, you take the squirrel, you make it run back to the tree like this, make a little loop, and then you take the bottom part of the loop, you make it run back to the tree, make a second loop, then you make the squirrel run through the hole, tie through the hole, and... And then you have a nice little loop like that that you can attach the weights to. So you need to do that on both sides, like so. Okay, so what you're going to do in the lab, you're going to start with two 200 gram masses. So I'm going to put a 200 gram mass on one side, and then I'm going to put a 200 gram mass on the other. So if I put a 200 gram mass on both sides, what's going to happen? Nothing. Why? It's going to be the same. Yeah. Okay. I have no net force. I have forces acting, but there's just no net force. Okay. So then what I'm going to do and you need to make sure this is like hanging over the edge of the lab table. So then what you're going to do is you're going to take a 20 gram mass and you're going to put that on one side over here like this. Okay? So I've got a 220 gram mass here. Okay? And I've got a 200 gram mass over there. Now, when I let go of it, what's going to happen? This is going to fall. So this is like Jaden, right? And then the other one is her little brother. So we're going to let this thing fall, okay? And have it out like this. So I got the 220. We're going to let go of it. Boink. It's going to begin to fall. Now, as that begins to fall, what are some things that we could measure as that falls? As the mass falls. Sounds like a horrible physics soap opera. As the mass falls. What are some things that I could measure? Time. I could measure time. I could say, well, how long does it take for it to fall? Okay? Now, if we're clever, and we are, what do you think we're going to let the initial velocity of the system equal? Zero. We're going to let the initial velocity equal zero, because that, that makes life simple. So we can measure how long it takes to fall. What else could we measure? We can measure a distance. Okay. We can measure a time, and we can measure a distance. So here's what you've got. So here's your pulley. I got a 220 gram mass on one side, and then I've got a 200 gram mass on the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to call this the force applied, or force, force J. Okay, because that's what's going to make the system move. This is the side that's going out on the gate. Okay, so this is force J, force applied. Okay, this is force little brother. Okay, that's opposing Jaden going out on the gate because she's got to drag this with her. Like, oh, seriously, my God, no. Okay, so she's got to take little brother out on the gate. So to get the force applied, you're going to take the bigger mass, which is in this case is going to be 0 0.220 kilograms. Make sure you're in kilograms. And you're going to multiply that by G, and that's going to be your force supply. Just make that a positive number. Okay, don't get weird. Just make it a positive number. Okay, we're going to call that our applied force. Now, this is force little brother. This is going to be 0.2 kilograms times G. 
Now, since that's a negative thing, it's like, oh, man, i got to take long. What, what should we go to brother's name? Jackson. Oh, Jackson, dear Lord. Okay. Oh, oh Jackson. Jackson never walks in this room and go, I already know about you. So, <laughs> Arnold goes, so, force Jackson is negative, right? Because you got to drag along your little brother on this date. Well, this sucks, okay? So, you can take 0.2 times 9.8, and so that's going to be a negative number. So, your applied force is going to be a big positive number. Your opposing force is going to be a smaller negative number. Oddly enough, we can set up a chart. Oh, force applied, force Jaden. Force opposing, opposing, force Jackson. And the difference between those two is going to be the net force. So this is going to be some big positive number. That's going to be some smaller negative number. Now, is my net force, listen to me very carefully. Miss Elliot, is my net force going to be a positive or negative number? A positive. Because positive, Jaden's desire to go out on the date is more than her, the opposing force caused by her little brother. It's like, Mom, I'm still going to go out on the date, even though I've got to take along Jackson. Okay? So this is going to be some positive number. So I'm going to divide that by the combined masses of U2 because I'm always going to divide by the combined masses. So what this is going to get me is a theoretical acceleration. This is what I should get, okay, based upon the difference of these masses divided by the combined mass. This is going to get me my theoretical acceleration. Now, what I'm going to do that, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to compare that to what I actually get. So to actually get the acceleration off measured values, you're going to use distance equals one-half at squared plus v naught time. Well, what's your initial velocity going to be? Zero. Zero. We're clever. We don't want this thing moving. We're going to let that go to zero. So you're going to measure the distance. Now, here's, what, here's what's going to require teamwork. Okay, Teamwork makes the dream work, or the physics lab, whatever the situation may be. So here's the story, right? So here's Jaden, there's Jackson, okay? So you need to measure one of two things. You need to either measure how far Jaden falls, or you need to measure how far Jackson goes up, okay? Take a meter stick. Measure from the bottom, measure from a knot. Maybe if you want to put that on the bottom of the ground and let that go, I don't care, okay? I would, but you're on your distance, I would recommend that you have at least 30 centimeters of distance, okay? Just don't go boom and make it move five centimeters and do that. Make it move at least 30 centimeters at a minimum, okay? I don't care how you measure this. Like I said, I don't care if you measure how far Jaden falls or how far Jackson goes up. Pick one. It doesn't make me any difference. But I would have at least two people timing this thing. Okay, Use your phones, whatever you want to use as timing devices. Now, if your times are vastly different, okay, if Izzy times it and she gets like 1.2 seconds, okay, and Peyton times it and she gets 1.5 seconds, don't go, oh, we'll just take the average. No, if you have a 0.3 second difference over that small of interval, somebody screwed up. Okay, those times should be relatively close together. So you're going to measure a distance, you're going to measure time. So if you solve this for acceleration, so Jaden, this is your date. How am I going to get your acceleration? How am I going to isolate your acceleration by itself? No, no, no. Just in this equation. Okay. How am I going to get A by itself? Take from the distance I get in dividing A one half T squared. Beautiful. Now, I hate fractions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to multiply by 2. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to get 2D. Then I'm going to divide by T squared to get your acceleration. So that's how you're going to get the acceleration. Okay. So that's your experimental acceleration. If you, when you divide by the combined mass, that's your theoretical acceleration. Okay, so let me hand this out. Yes, it's on a nice, sweet, and purple cover.
Okay. So, let me give you a hint. So up here, I tell you, the reading on the scale gives you the applied force. In big, bold letters, I tell you, the reading on the scale is the applied force. Okay? So, you're going to move upward at a constant velocity, reading on the scale. Downward at a constant velocity, reading on the scale. Accelerate upward, accelerate downward. Okay? Boom, there you go. Then you have a whole bunch of questions to answer. That's all the data that you need. But there's a whole bunch of things that you need to do. Pay attention if I'm asking about the net force, the applied force, or the opposing force. Now, notice on number seven, I tell you, in the space to the left, sketch and label all the forces acting on the mass while it is being accelerated upward. Okay? So you got this. Boom. You're going to accelerate this upward. Let me give you a hint. You should have three vectors, the applied force, the opposing force, and the net force. Which direction do all of them point? Okay? When you get to number 10, okay, this is an elevator problem. Okay? So, force applied, 534 kilogram elevator, you're moving at a constant velocity. I tell you, sketch a free body diagram off to the left. You want to find the tension. So, tension is a new term. Okay? Tension means the same thing as force applied. Okay? So like when this is being is when this is holding up this 200 gram mass, 200 gram mass weighs 1.96 newtons. So I would say the tension in the string is equal to the 1.96 newton force acting down. Okay? So tension just means applied force. It's what's happening through a cable, through a chain, something like that. When you get to number 12, it's an elevator problem, okay? Every string, every cable, every chain in the world has a breaking strength. So what's happening on number 12, let me give you kind of a visual. Here's this elevator. And you figure on a worst case scenario, you're going to put this elevator in a hotel, and in a worst case scenario, 20 drunk frat guys are going to try and cr cram into this elevator. Okay, so you got 20, 20 people. Average mass, 75 kilograms. So the mass of the elevator itself is 500. So you have the people inside and the elevator, total combined mass. So I tell you that the upward cable can withstand 2.96 times 10 to the fourth newtons of force. That's your applied force, okay? So you can have an upward force of 2.96 times 10 to the fourth. If you exceed that, it breaks. So let me kind of give you a visual on what can happen. So here is <coughs> Hank, okay? So I got this string, right? And I'm gonna tie this on here. You got a couple ties. Done. Okay. So if I slowly, so like right now, like I can't even lift Hank. Okay. So I can't even lift this thing because if I try and lift it, that string's going to break. So okay. Well, clearly I don't even have enough strength in here of that string to lift it before that breaks. So let's try it. Okay. We'll put a. Uh, one kilogram mass. Okay. So here we have a one kilogram mass. Okay. So if I slowly lift that one kilogram mass, it can handle that strength. Okay. Now, if I try and lift this up really, really quickly, put that back on there. Now, if I accelerate quickly, that string breaks. So clearly there's a, there's a break point. So if I, if I have a small amount of acceleration, the string can withstand it. If I try and accelerate too quickly, the string breaks. So what you're going to try and find is what's the maximum acceleration I can have for that elevator 
without that happening. Okay? So let me give you a hint. Force net equals force applied plus force opposing. Find your net force, divide it by the mass, there's your acceleration. All of 13 is a helicopter. Okay? Have a helicopter. You have a helicopter. Let me give you a hint. Always have the gravity mafia that you have to pay off. Gravity mafia is trying to hold down the elevator. 14, 15, and 16, 17, and 18 all deal with the limb lap, okay? That you all just did. So I'm revisiting that lap, okay? Same values, 5,000 kilograms, negative 1.67 meters per second squared. I beg of you, I beg of you, I beg of you. Remember, force applied plus force opposing equals net force. Now, on page three, this is where you're gonna do the Atwood machine. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna do five tries. So you're gonna come in here and you're gonna have the 220 gram on one side, like this, and you're gonna let that thing fall. So you're going to determine your distance. I don't care what your distance is, okay? It doesn't make any difference. Pick distance. This has to be more than 30 centimeters. You're gonna time that thing in five different trials. And then you're gonna calculate the acceleration using 2D over T squared equals A. So on this top part up here, you're gonna calculate that acceleration based upon the data, 2D over T squared. Then you're gonna take a second 20 gram mass, that's 50, you're gonna take a second 20 gram mass, and then you're gonna hook that up, like so. Now, when I put the second 20 gram mass on here, what do you think is going to happen to the acceleration when I put that second 20 gram mass on there? Is the acceleration going to be bigger, smaller, or is it going to be the same? Peyton? I still got the 200 gram mass here. Okay? So, what I'm going to look at. When I put a second 20 gram mass on here, when I let go of it, do you think the acceleration is going to be bigger or smaller than if I just have, so here's my comparison. I have 220 versus 240. Which acceleration is going to be bigger, the 240 or the 220? The 240. Fantastic. Why? It's more mass. It's more. So what have I done when I put that other 20 gram mass on there? What have I done to Jaden's desire to go out on the date? So right, right? So she has more desire to go out on the date, right? It's like, oh, oh, right, got an extra 20. Here we go, right? But what have I done to the opposing force? Have I, have I changed your little brother? Jackson is still the same, but I've made Jaden's desire to go out on the date bigger. So we're going to get a bigger acceleration because of the fact that, that almost fell, and because of the fact that now she has more of a desire to go out on that date, so I'm going to have a bigger acceleration. All right, so here's what I would recommend because it's Wednesday. Focus on getting the data, okay? Do the elevator part, take the, take the scale, lift it up, boom, get your data. Answer the questions later. Set this up, do all your trials, and then start calculations, start your calculations. Okay? Got it? Good. Go. Do science.